Australia's naval modernization is entering a phase where strategic urgency overrides technical ambition, and nothing reflects this shift more clearly than the decision to simplify the Hunter-class frigate design. What was once envisioned as a highly advanced adaptation of the British Type 26 has now been recalibrated to emphasize production speed, industrial feasibility, and operational realism. This shift is not a retreat from capability, but a calculated response to a fast closing window in the Indo-Pacific, where the threat environment is dominated by long range strike systems, hypersonic weapons, and asymmetric saturation tactics. Canberra understands that the next decade will likely define the naval balance of the region, and the Hunter class must enter service early enough to matter. The original Type 26 blueprint attracted Australia because of its impressive sensor suite, stealth shaping, and anti-submarine warfare pedigree. But that design was built for Royal Navy operating patterns and European industrial rhythms, not for an Indo-Pacific nation facing dispersed operational requirements and a rapidly shifting threat environment. As the Australian project matured, it became clear that the sheer complexity of the baseline Type 26 introduced unacceptable risks. Multiple radar families, an extensive acoustic system, a complex mission bay, and a hull optimized for low observability all contributed to higher costs and slower shipyard schedules. Even under ideal industrial conditions, the frigate would have faced delays. In Australia's industrial ecosystem, still developing its heavy surface combatant competencies, the full British configuration risked slipping three to five years beyond the intended window. This risk is not theoretical. The Indo-Pacific is undergoing a transformation in which long-range fires, unmanned swarm systems, and hypersonic glide vehicles are radically compressing decision times. In a conflict scenario, survivability increasingly depends on distribution, redundancy, and real-time integration with allied command and control networks. Canberra has concluded that the most advanced sensor suite in the world is useless if the ship carrying it does not exist in the fleet. The strategic shift is therefore about prioritizing capability on time rather than capability at maximum specification. Australia is not abandoning high-end warfare. It is optimizing for the version of high-end warfare that is actually unfolding in the region. The first major area of simplification is the sensor and radar architecture. Instead of layering multiple overlapping systems, the revised Hunter concept focuses on a primary radar family with a secure supply chain in Australia and the United States. This reduces integration risk and aligns the ship with American combat system standards. In parallel, Canberra is reducing the number of specialized subsystems originally planned for the British variant. This is not a degradation of capability. It is a rational step toward ensuring the frigate can be produced at scale maintained domestically and upgraded predictably across its life cycle. The second simplification concerns combat system standardization. Canberra increasingly views interoperability with the United States as a non-negotiable requirement. Integrating an American-aligned combat system paired with missiles such as the standard missile family provides strategic coherence and reduces the technical uncertainty of mixing British, European, and American subsystems. The original hybrid approach created timelines that were too fragile in an era where the Indo-Pacific may not offer the luxury of incremental integration. Structural simplifications form the third pillar of Australia's redesign. Some of the more intricate stealth shaping of the Type 26 hull will be softened in favor of features that allow faster construction and easier maintenance. Indo-Pacific operations involve long deployments at high tempo, 
including extended anti-submarine patrols far from Australian ports. A ruggedized hull design matters more than the marginal radar cross-section reduction offered by complex shaping. Here, Australia is making a decisive choice. Durability and availability trump marginal stealth gains. The fourth area of change involves the sonar and anti-submarine warfare suite. The Hunter class will remain a potent submarine hunter. This is the core reason Australia chose the Type 26 lineage. But the country is revising the set of ancillary acoustic systems that were not essential to the Indo-Pacific environment. Instead, resources will be directed toward optimizing the towed array, hull sonar, and integration with Royal Australian Air Force Maritime Patrol aircraft. The goal is simple a streamlined sensor suite that still delivers overmatch against regional submarines while eliminating components that slow production or add little advantage. A more practical weapons configuration is the fifth critical adjustment. The early Hunter concept included a vertical launching system capacity that exceeded immediate Australian needs. Canberra has realized that the key is not to maximize theoretical missile loadouts, but to ensure the frigates carry the right mix of long-range air defense, anti-submarine, and strike options in a timely manner. The revised design holds open space and weight margins for future hypersonic weapons without forcing premature integration. This reflects a broader doctrinal principle. Growth potential is important but it cannot become a bottleneck. These technical simplifications reinforce a deeper truth. Australia is beginning a new era of defense industrial policy. The Hunter class is not just a warship. It is the anchor of a national learning curve in heavy naval manufacturing. Canberra is determined to avoid a spiral where costs escalate and schedules slip until the ship no longer arrives in time to meet strategic needs. The new philosophy emphasizes predictable production, modular upgrades, and a steady cadence of deliveries. In this model, the Hunter class becomes the industrial foundation for future programs rather than an isolated technical masterpiece. Politically and strategically, the redesign is reshaping the future Royal Australian Navy. The country is effectively building a two-tier fleet, a heavy class spearheaded by Hunter and a medium class composed of offshore patrol vessels and potentially future light frigates. This layered approach gives Australia both presence and punch. It also ensures the Navy can distribute assets across the vast Indo-Pacific theater rather than concentrating risk in too few high-end ships. Even as AUKUS submarine programs gather momentum, surface combatants remain the daily workhorses of deterrence, signaling, and coalition operations. In the end, simplifying the Hunter class is a strategic correction rather than a compromise. Australia is opting for a design that meets its operational needs within the decisive time frame of the 2030s. The region's evolving threat environment punishes delay more harshly than it rewards incremental improvements in stealth or modularity. A frigate delivered in time with robust but realistic systems contributes more to national defense than a perfect design delivered late. By streamlining the Hunter class, Canberra is aligning industrial capacity, strategic urgency, and fiscal discipline into a coherent whole. In an era where speed is a form of protection, this recalibrated approach is not only practical, but necessary.